those of you just in here, please turn off your cell phones. No video and no flash photography. We'll start with a uh, comment from Coach. Yeah. Yeah, Coach. Thank you. And uh, we'll open it up then for questions for the student athletes before we direct questions at, at Eric. Uh, give us an overview, please. Well, in the... Uh in the biggest game in, in Michigan baseball history in a long, long time, uh, we got the best pitching performance of Tommy Henry's career. He was the entire storyline tonight. Uh, we, needed, we needed a strong performance, and he gave us something magical tonight. So I think we're all just uh, in awe and, and very appreciative of holding down a very good Florida State team tonight uh, who's been extremely hot and finding every single way to win and uh, Tommy was just I don't even know if there's an adjective to describe how good he was but he was better than that okay we'll have questions for the student athletes now identify yourself your affiliation and to which young men you're directing the question and uh, we'll get a mic to you for the for the question we're ready for questions Okay. Oh. Steve Robertson with uh, Jeans Page 247. Jesse, you guys finished the regular season losing five of seven, but you found something here in the postseason. What, what has changed with Michigan baseball to kind of make you guys the story of this tournament? <clears throat> uh, we just figured out that we were pressing and uh, worried about just, just trying to win or not trying not to lose, and now we're just uh, playing loose and uh, – Having fun at TD Amer Playground. <laughs> okay, Aaron has a question. Aaron Fit, D1 Baseball. Uh, Joe, I wanted to ask you first what you saw from, from Tommy tonight um, and you know, what has made him um, so spectacular here in the postseason, it seems like. Um, the first thing I think about when I think of Tommy is his discipline and consistency and how <clears throat> truly consistent he is throughout the year, whether it's in a fall long toss because he was took a little bit of time to get back into it after a long summer, but his intensity when he's doing whatever he's doing is just ridiculous. Um, you guys are just starting to see it now because it's on a national level, but that's been Tommy the entire year. Um, and like the discipline to keep the balls low in the zone, to not miss. If he does have a miss, the next pitch was – I think he shook me off after a, a hung breaking ball, and then the next one was one of the dirtier ones I've ever caught from him. So that's, I mean, that's him in a nutshell, <coughs> is keeping the ball low in the zone, pounding it, discipline, taking breaths, the whole nine yards on it. And that's been what we've seen from him this entire time. I know Coach will say the exact same thing, but I think you guys are just obviously starting to see it now. But that's just Tommy Henry for you. Question back here. Abby Snyder, Michigan Daily. Uh, Tommy, how did you prepare, prepare excuse me, for FSU's batters today, and what was your approach, your mindset going really deep and then obviously finishing this game? Um, you know, we just tried as a pitching staff to, to come out here and do what we've done all year, um, attack the strike zone um, and, and play the numbers. I mean, a great hitter is going to get out seven out of ten times. Um, so if you attack the strike zone, you know, you force the issue um, and, and let the defense work. And you saw that tonight. Chris Bullock was, you know, running all around left field, making heck of a play. You saw in the ninth inning, you know, KO's diving, um, a one hop, you know, a hard hit ground ball that he's making the play on a huge spot. Um, so, you know, to trust, it's, it's easy when you can trust those guys behind you uh, and, and just kind of watch them work and, and let them make the highlight plays. Down here. Steve Kornacki, mgoblue.com. This is for Tommy. Take me to the end of the game when you've got the last out and, and it's, it's, it's been accomplished. You've gone nine innings against a strong team and, and Joe's running up to you. Talk about your emotions at that time. Um, pure joy. Um, I mean, it didn't matter you know, what role you played in the game. I'm sure everyone was feeling the exact same way. Um, you know, we just show up to the field one day at a time, just trying to win games for each other, for the block M, you know, for the eight letters on our chest. Um, and, and so whether you were in the bunker all game or you, you know, you hit a home run the second at bat of the game, 
um, everyone's feeling that pure joy just because, you know, it's a special team. We're playing for each other, um, and we're playing for the block M on our hat. Um, and, and so, you know, we're all just pumped up that we get to be here a few more days uh, and play another baseball game. Get right here. Uh, Austin Falco, WCBN. Uh, for Jesse, you and Jordan both swung at the first pitches you saw to start the game. Uh, was that part of kind of the, the game plan against uh, Florida State today? Uh, and you really got into one there. And then for Tommy, what was it like kind of starting out already with the one nothing lead that helped the confidence and helped you pound the zone a little bit more early on? Uh, going into the game, we weren't necessarily thinking to swing at the first pitch or anything like that. Uh, we all, as a hit, like as hitters in general, we were just trying to look for our fastballs early in the game to to hit hard, and uh, it just happened that both of us got good ones to hit. Um, and, and yeah, big thanks to this guy. Um, you know, pitching with a lead is much easier than pitching behind or in a tie game. Uh, it gives you the freedom to just attack. Um, and, and to watch the defense work and, and let them make the plays, um, not have to do too much. So to have to be able to do that from you know the first time you step on the mound um, is it, fun, and, and the defense you know made every play tonight. Okay, Aaron, this will be the last question for the players. Uh, Tommy, obviously you had a really good slider going. It seemed like all night, but. Um, it seemed like you, you really got that changeup going, too, in the middle to later part of the game. Was that something, did, did you want to keep that kind of in your back pocket, and do you feel like you, you featured that more the second or third time through? Uh, yeah. Uh, Coach Fetter drew up a great game plan tonight, um, and, and we were just doing anything we could to keep those guys off balance. That's a, that's a deep, talented lineup. Uh, you've seen how hot they are. Uh, great coach. You know, it's just a great group of guys. Um, and so, you know, the, the plan was just to keep them as off balance as we could. Um, and it just happened to work out a little bit. Guys, thank you. And uh, take a couple of days off here. <laughs> we'll see you Friday night, Friday afternoon. Okay, we'll open up for questions now for Eric. Same rules. Okay, right here. Uh, Daniel Thompson with WCBN Sports. Uh, so you guys have jumped out to a one nothing lead in the top of the first, each of the first uh, two games here in Omaha, and really the whole NCAA tournament, I believe you've led at some point in every game. How do you think that's uh, helped the team just, you know, always at least in some port of point in the game, knowing you have that lead to play with? I think any team that, that scores first, uh, has a little bit of a confidence and a looseness about them. It allows our the freedom of being able to take chances on the bases, uh, to you know employ some different types of plays, whether it be first and third plays or just being aggressive on the bases. When you're at a deficit, you don't want to make any outs on the bases. So getting ahead and trying to extend the lead is something every team's trying to do. Okay, right here. Andrew Laidlaw, WCBN Sports. Coach, what was your mindset going in today, facing off against a legendary Mike Martin? Um, well, you know, on behalf of every Division One coach, we have the utmost respect for Coach Martin and just the legendary career that he has put together. Uh, I don't think his record will ever be broken. Uh, Forty years of forty or more wins. Um, just in the type of person that he is. He's, he's as genuine and as humble, and what you see is what you get. And he's, you know, when, when he didn't have to be nice to me as a first-year head coach at the University of Maryland, and he goes out of his way to talk to me and give me advice and put his arm around me, and, you know, our teams were struggling back then. He's just, he, he cares a great deal about people. So um, I'll never forget those opportunities uh, in the last 10 years of getting to be across the field from him. Aaron? Coach, I know Tommy was just kind of untouchable for about the first entire first half of the season. Um, and it seemed like maybe, you know, uh, there's a little stretch there in the second half where it wasn't quite as effective. And now he's, he's kind of at this level. Can you kind of take us through uh, what you've seen from him from that midseason point to now? Yeah, he was, you know, battling a little bit of bicep tendonitis in the mid part of the season. and. Um, 
you know, just misfiring a little bit up in the zone. But what you've seen the last few weeks is, you know, this guy opening up his chest and, and seeing his character and seeing his makeup. You know, he's an incredibly consistent person like Joe made reference to. That's why he's elected captain. He does all the right things all the time in the classroom, in the community. He's an unbelievable teammate. And we need him to pitch with the flu and a touch of pneumonia. He does it. You know, we need the biggest performance in the biggest game of our season. He does it. Uh, he's just, you know, he's just a, an unbelievable kid. Steve. Steve Kornacki, mgoblue.com. Uh, Eric, talk about your, your pitching going forward. I mean, you, your pitchers came up so strong for you now that you have so much that you can do in terms of how you attack the next game. Do you have anything that you're 100% sure that, you, that you're going to do with the pitching going, going, going forward? And talk about how you'll spend the next three days. Well, well, we'll spend tomorrow figuring out how to hit a left-handed slider. That's for sure. Um, no, we'll, we'll, uh, we are in a good position just to, you know, have because of the two quality starts we got from, from Carl and Tommy. So we have Jeff Criswell is available to start Friday. We also have Carl Kaufman is available to start Friday. I think we'll figure that out in the next few days. Um, these next couple of days, we're going to get, we're going to lift weights. Uh, we are going to work on on our offense a little bit. Uh, Tommy covered up, you know, a lot of mistakes offensively tonight and not making adjustments to some tricksters out of the bullpen, the sidearm guy, and then the backwards mixer lefty. Uh, so got to tighten some things up offensively, but that's what pitching and defense can do. They can cover up your a night where you don't have your best offensive performance, but you get a couple of timely hits with the home run and the two out RBI single, uh, and it was enough. Follow up. Akeo made a, a a a big play to keep the keep it so that the tying run wasn't coming to the plate. Talk about that play in the ninth inning. Well, Akeo is a special defender. He's he's been doing that for four straight years. He's uh, he is a a guy that can change the momentum of a game with his defense. Uh, he made a, a diving play up the middle uh, in game one. He made that play in the four hole tonight in the ninth inning, which was a huge play just to minimize any type of a rally. Uh, I thought, you know, our Coach Noble and Coach Berdar and Coach Fetter, Coach Fetter putting together that game plan uh, from how we were going to attack their hitters. And then Coach Noble and Coach Berdar, the defensive positioning tonight I thought was fantastic as well. It seemed like we had a lot of Adam balls tonight, and that's because our guys were standing in the right spot. Okay, any more questions for Eric? Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you.